Female hormones have to be one of the most interesting yet complex topics out there. I personally have dedicated my life to understanding female hormones. I find it absolutely fascinating. And I, in my career, help girls go from infertility or having no period to having their fertility back and getting a monthly menstrual cycle. I absolutely love it. I find it super, super fascinating. So when I was listening to this podcast on someone else's channel the other day with Dr. Patrick Flynn, I was like, hey, I would love to just like listen to this podcast with you guys and I would love to give my commentary and I'd love to like utilize this other podcast to bring up some very important topics. So that's what we're going to do today. So before we get started, please take a moment to like this video. It's just a great way to say thank you for being here, for creating this. It's Saturday morning. I didn't have to be here, guys, but I absolutely do love you and I do love talking about this stuff. So here we are. Um, let's dive into this. It starts with Patrick talking about um, how, kind of how he got into this. And he's talking about how he met this girl, which is, you know, years later now, his wife and all. Um, he met this girl and she told him early on in their dating that she cannot have kids and that she has very painful periods. She was diagnosed with like endometriosis. And we're just gonna start here. And again, I'm going to stop it when I need to. And we're gonna learn a lot about female hormones and about the issues in our medical system when it comes to helping a woman understand and balance out her hormones. And that's the thing that I'm like, yes, we all need to understand this a little bit more. I started to get going to her after about two weeks. Um, what had happened was I came over to her uh, her place and she was, I knocked on the door and answered, she was crying like crazy. And I was like, oh my goodness, what did I do already? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, I didn't do anything, but she did. She got her period that day. And what happened is, is every time she gets it, it was very devastating, it was very painful. And then she let me on a little, little thing that I had to make a choice. And that was a turning point in my life. And we're, we're all of a sudden, she's like, listen, she was hitting to know you the last two weeks. Uh, she was serious when she said she wanted to marry me. But she said, listen, she was, um, after getting to know you, I know you want kids. And she was, I can't have kids. The doctors almost ripped her years old at a young age. She was at the time 22 years old. Um, she, she suffered from endometriosis. Also, have colitis, cystic acne, and, and cluster eggs. And believe it or not, I was going to be a doc within a couple months. And, I, and just looking at her, you couldn't tell. Yeah. You know, saying she was a beautiful 22 year old, uh, petite, everything like that. And what had happened was, I actually had to make a choice. She gave me a, an opportunity to realize she was crying because she was so sick. But she actually said, Listen, she wasn't giving me the opportunity to leave. And I was like, And I made the choice to listen. Everything you're telling me, and everything from my personal history and my background, I said, I disagree. And, and I realized all the experts that were that were taking care of her, um, they just had, I believe, the wrong perspective. And then I started digging deep in female hormones. And of course, now we have four beautiful daughters. Yeah, exactly. So you ignored the doctors, mm -hmm. you beat the odds, your wife was able to have kids after being told she couldn't have yep. kids. Yep. So what did you discover that helped change the trajectory yep. of her health? It, 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 the disagreement wasn't um, um, even, let's say, contradicting to what the doctors were doing. It's just that what happened is, I believe that their perspective was much different than mine. And let me give you an example. Um, so all of a sudden I said, hey, listen, so what's going on? And so found out that her mom had some issues um, and stuff like that. And so I started to dig deep a little bit and uh, started to realize that I said, listen, you know, in a short story, I said, can I look at you, all your labs and stuff that I had done? And then I realized from that standpoint on that the viewpoint of how our current even current healthcare system looks at things today it's dramatically incomplete. And, and, and I can sum this up a little bit differently is, you know, if we look at hormones in general, um, you know, obviously you're a woman, I'm a man, okay? Uh, and So he already is kind of alluding to some things here saying like, hey, I realized that how they were looking at things was just so inaccurate or not inaccurate, it was just incomplete, which is leading to inaccuracy. And I know a lot of girls come to me and they're like, my hormones are normal. <laughs> they're like, I, but I don't have a period or I have a very regular cycle or I have PCOS or they have all these things going on. And they're like, my lab work came out totally fine. And he goes on to explain how we can't just take a snapshot picture of your hormones and be like, well, this is what it is. And they look fine and they're in the normal range. Uh, we definitely need a more complete you to be able to help you understand what's going on with your hormonal health. So the way that we classically test for these things is just not going to give us accurate or helpful information all the time. 
Most women get one, maybe two measured, and here's what happens, and they don't even get them tested properly. So testosterone co controls me both physically and mentally, okay? Estrogens, you have to put an S on the end, control you both physically and mentally. But here's the big thing. I realized that most women have never had them tested because they maybe get one or two. How can I make a decision as a doctor? That, can, that hormones can affect you both physically and mentally. How can I do anything to you if I don't get a complete picture of what they are? So I started calling labs and said, can we measure all of them? They're like, yes, why? Insurance doesn't pay for them. I said, I have a woman who is deadly sick. She has endometriosis, which is more of an estrogen dominant uh, condition, but they measured her estradiol, which is just her one maybe. <laughs> see, you know that, right? Okay. Yes. See, it's me. That, but that's it's, true biology. Yes. Okay. So here's what happens, and so, but so that's why. So mentally, men are actually more mentally stable because they have very little fluctuations. Now, women. You now, haven't women, met my exes. Yes. Well, <laughs> it might be soy boys, but we'll talk about that. Um, but the idea is this: but it has very little fluctuations that way. But but here's what does happen. Okay. With women, I realized I started mapping out women's hormones and realized that women are cyclic monthly but their estrogens and other hormones change four times a month. Mm -hmm. So I realized, wait, men and women, or women change four times in the month. And let me give you a, a simple analogy on this. Women are sometimes you get up in the morning, you put your bra on, it's all nice and full. Next one, week, you put your bra on, it's a bunch of shriveled raisins. It's like, where do they go? <laughs> you know, you're right? I it's feel like, attacked. See, you know, but see what I'm saying? That's yes. the thing, women go, oh my goodness, you're right. See, because your body changes every week differently. Now imagine this though, but here's one thing. And I was literally talking to a woman over in Europe today, let's just say there's a very, uh, I'll say um, the owner of Spotify has this big, big uh, event. They want me to come speak on this kind of female hormones. I was getting, they want to say the interviews that way. And all of a sudden I said this, I said, listen, but now estrogens change four times a month. So guess what happens? Ladies, that means mentally you change four times in the month. And she goes, oh my goodness. She goes, there's, I'm a CEO of this company, but there's some days of the month that I shouldn't make any decisions. That's right. Yeah. Because four times in the month, there's, you are genetically different and that's okay. So, so men are gonna deal with things and look at the world very differently than women because women's changes. So I say men, imagine this. No, no joke. Okay, so let's pause right here. But he's saying is that he's seeing when he does the full lab work on a woman that he sees, oh my gosh, there's so much that shifts and changes about four times in our month, right? So he's like, you're a different person. He's like, if I'm looking at you hormonally, you're a way different person and our hormones have such an impact on our emotions and just like how we feel, how energetic we are and everything. And that, so that's impacting us and it's almost like there's four different versions of us. And I think women need to understand that more and not see it as a crazy thing, not see it as a bad thing, not see it as a crazy thing. And I love that he's really normalizing this. Like you're not crazy for having like multiple personalities almost. It's like, it's natural for you as a woman to have a variance in kind of how you feel throughout the month on a consistent basis. And so, yeah, for anyone who's dating you, they should understand that they are getting four different versions of you. If you are menstruating on a monthly basis, you're going through the seasons of the cycle and it's going to shift and change you uh, quite a bit. I tell the woman that I work with all the time that like, we are supposed to be very emotional and up and down and have all these kind of waves pass us or pass through us. Men are, are a lot more like this. They're not more stable, they're not like this. And I unfortunately find that a lot of women that I work with are like trying to numb themselves out to the point where they're just like this because they see it as more productive. They see themselves as potentially being able to be more successful if they can just go like this all the time. So they're trying to almost like make themselves like a man, honestly, just like keeping their hormones very like this. Um, instead of honoring the fact that they are just not wired to be in a numbed out state like this, we need to have those fluctuations if we're actually going to feel really good. What it did for women is this, is it starts to realize that as they go up and down, their emotions are not supposed to be stable. So I tell people, there's no such thing as an emotionally stable woman. Mm -hmm. It's physically impossible. And that's okay. And that's okay. That it, but see, men don't understand that. So they look and go, honey, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And, and they try to move nuts because they can't explain what's wrong. I'm, telling you, I'm trying to teach men. There's nothing wrong with them. Well, and that's the game changer of this conversation yeah. is you're saying it's not just women who need to understand our hormones. Yep. It is the men. Yes. So that men aren't like, I don't understand her. Why is she always changing her yes. mind and doing all this? 
the guys have to know how yep. hormones work too. Now, what you discovered while you're learning all these things about hormones and women's health, yep. you see that all of these doctors everywhere try to tell women all the time, you know, there's no medical reason to menstruate. You can uh, just get rid of your period if you're sick of it, just get rid of it with birth control. And why did that deeply disturb you? Well, it did disturb me because if you even look at birth control, how it's classified, it's classified as an endocrine disruptor. Okay. So first and foremost, please, please, please write down in the comment section if you've ever gone to the gynecologist and they have offered you birth control. Please let me know if you are someone with amenorrhea and they have offered you birth control as a solution. Big quotes here because it is not a solution because what he just said and what he will continue to talk about is how birth control is an endocrine disruptor. Many people have the false notion that birth control just kind of tricks your body into thinking it's pregnant and that's why you can't get pregnant. And great, it's a good birth control, but that's actually not true. It is going in and it is disrupting, it is disrupting your hormones. That is literally crazy that we are taking a pill that is going to be disrupting our hormones on such a huge, powerful level. Let's hear what he has to say. And it affects you neurologically. And what it also does, once again, people say it tricks your body and you're pregnant. That's not true, okay? It endocrine disrupts you. Now remember, let's go back to this. Ladies, think about this. You make decisions differently every week. So therefore, when you're in birth control, it affects you psychologically. You'll see the world differently. Don't, don't, don't believe me? Ask women that are on birth control, and all of a sudden, they, they get with a guy and marry a guy, and all of a sudden, they get off birth control, and they go, what am I doing? They, I'm not joking, you mess with a woman's hormones, it affects them both physically and mentally. But see what it Oof. This is big. This is so, 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 so big. When we have a population of women who are on birth control and who are disrupting their hormones, they are disrupting this beautiful cycle that they are supposed to be going through, right? It's a very intuitive, like, a uh, cycle that really helps you feel really aligned to who you are, your emotions, how you feel about things. But now you take this thing that's disrupting all of your hormones and all of a sudden, women aren't attracted to the things that they would have been attracted to. So what he's saying is that you like look at a woman who was on birth control when she met her partner and then she gets off birth control and a lot of them have this feeling of like, dude, I do not like you. Like what the heck? Because, well, yeah, now your hormones are working properly. Now, it's like our body knows, you know, you guys have probably heard that of like, um, depending on someone's like pheromones, your body really knows like what would be a good kind of match for you to make babies with, like immune system wise and everything. And so we need that. It helps us actually find a good partner that we can have healthy kids with. And women are just on birth control now all the time. And their ability to listen to that is impacted. Let's continue. This is because they're, because they don't have the perspective of how to, you know, take care of even young ladies. Think of this, we accept cramping, periods, all these things, um, uh, uh, PMS as normal. It's not called premenstrual normal. It's called premenstrual syndrome, but it's so common. Don't confuse that with normal. See, when a, when a young lady uh, has, let's say she's 16, then she has PMS. Uh, uh, my heart breaks for her because there's physical and psychological things that are going to develop because her hormones are abnormal. And because the medical field doesn't test hormones properly, they're, they're the only solution they have is something endocrine disrupting. Please, women. Because we don't test hormones properly, we don't understand the importance of really getting a clear picture of everything going on. The only solution that the medical field has right now that they just like hand out like candy, is to disrupt your hormones. You tell me if that sounds like a good idea. You can get those hormones back normal. And so my wife's body was so endocrine disruptive, uh, she tried birth control, it was a horrible experience for her. I never seen before I knew her, but then what I did is once again, guys, you understand this, is your body wants to be normal. It does, it wants the hormones to be normal. And that's why, I, that's why when I watch some of the things going on in the world today, um, no joke, if I were to give you synthetic testosterone. Do you understand that? Okay, wait, before he jumps into this, I, I just love that he really affirmed that of like, your body wants to be hormonally normal. 
This understanding that my body wants to get into balance is what really helped me actually push forward with my recovery because I stepped into it with that understanding of my body wants to get my period, it wants to get it. I just have to give it better inputs so that my body can produce that. Um, but it helped to know that like my body has been designed through evolution for so many years to menstruate on a monthly basis it wants to do it. I just need to start giving it the right things. Start to show me up characteristics, even have behavioral that way. So when someone comes and says, is that, this is not jokes, and you are. But then what I did is once again, guys, you understand this, is your body wants to be normal. It does, it wants the hormones to be normal. And that's why, I, that's why when I watch some of the things going on in the world today, um, no joke, if I were to give you synthetic testosterone, do you understand that you would start to show male characteristics, even have behavioral that way? So when someone comes and says, is that, this is not a joke, and I've dealt with this my whole career, um, and it all of a sudden says, hey, I'm a male, and I feel like a female, I'm like, okay, let's get your hormones tested, because it can't happen. It can't happen. And I've dealt with that for a long time, and I've had a lot of women come and say, doc, I, I, you know, I, I believe I'm a male. I'm like, okay. I'm like, but they test hormones, and they're very t testosterone dominant. You ask a woman that has like PCOS, that's very testosterone dominant, she can have a sex drive like a man. But if you have a sex drive like a male, which you're not supposed to, you'll actually get cancer. Okay, a lot here. What he said, a lot of women will come into his office being like, I feel like a man. Like, maybe I'm in the wrong body. I feel like a man. And he simply just looks at the hormones and he goes, you're just so hormonally imbalanced that like, yeah, you probably do because your testosterone is super up high and your estrogen is down like really low. Um, and that can be a function of tap water, of all the like crazy stuff that we have in there, of poor diet and nutrition, of burnout lifestyles where we're, you know, crossfitting all the time and we're always working out and we're too lean of a body weight. That can make a woman feel a lot more like a man, right? Um, but he's saying like, it's simply because your hormones are very off uh, balance here. And then he went on to share that, you know, a woman with PCOS, where she has that higher testosterone, she may, may, may say that she has a very high sex drive, like all of the time. I want it all of the time. He's saying you shouldn't, you shouldn't have a high sex drive all the time. Like men have a high sex drive all the time. Now it's not to say that we don't enjoy sex. It's not to say that we don't have our moments, right? It's to say that we are cyclical in nature and our hormones should be driving us to periods in the month where we don't feel like it. Get me my follicular phase, trust me, I feel like it. Ovulatory phase, oh yeah, I feel like it. Luteal phase, no, I'm sorry, I don't. Menstruation, no, I'm sorry, I don't feel like it. And that's natural, and that's normal. And, it, and it's not to say that I have a bad like sex job, a bad libido, no, I have a very normal, very good functioning libido. And that's going to entail me not having it at like a 10 every single day. But a man, totally. A man can just, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go. Oh my gosh. It's like any second, I'm just ready to go. <laughs> I'm just like cracking up because I feel like that's how, that's how my partner is, or it's just like literally any, like 3 a.m., sure, let's do it. Like, oh my gosh, like any moment, any moment of the day, he's ready. Me? And also, you had to butter me up a little bit. <laughs> like, I can't just jump into that. But depending on where I'm on my cycle, like I need a lot of buttering up or like I can just jump into it. Really depends on where I'm at. And I love that he's talking about this and sharing that it's it's not healthy. If you are just constantly feeling like it, or if you're constantly not feeling like it, like that's not healthy. Both spectrums, not healthy, right? So when someone comes and says, is that, this is not a joke, and I've dealt with this my whole career. Um, and it, it all of a sudden says, hey, I'm a male, and I feel like a female, I'm like, okay, let's get your hormones tested, because it can't happen. It can't happen. And I've dealt wow. with that for a long time, and I've had a lot of women come and say, Doc, I, I, you know, I, I believe I'm a male. I'm like, okay. I'm like, but they test hormones, and they're very t testosterone dominant. You ask a woman that has like PCOS, that's very testosterone dominant, she can have a sex drive like a man. But if you have a sex drive like a male, which you're not supposed to, you'll actually get cancer. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I'm gonna say. I love that, I love that I have sex drive like a male. I'm like, scares the heck out of me. <laughs>
because you're not supposed to. It's 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 it's, it's phys- your body physically can't handle it. So then you're gonna end up having cysts, which can develop into cancers and things like that. So our world is trying to make men and women the same. I'm going. That's in, it's physically impossible. If you understand the basics of hormone, there's no way a man and woman can think the same. There's no way, way a woman's a man's body can be the same. And here's what I, what I and here was the discovery that made me to change my life. I think this is why God gave me four daughters. I, I was starting to study hormones at a great detail and start to realize that oh my goodness, hormones change and they and they can be produced and they convert. Guys don't have that much conversion as women do. And I realized that one of the most dominant hormones in women, besides estrogens, is progesterone. It's its counteracting hormone. Now here's what happens. That progesterone can convert into cortisol and cortisone. Mm-hmm. And that's Stress how hormones. you have, exactly. So here's what happens. Testosterone, if another man was in the studio and I went to stress him out or attack him, you know what happens with testosterone? It goes up. Men are meant to handle stress. You stress a woman out mentally or physically, her, especially at certain times of the month, her hormones drop and she gets very sick. So I looked and I said, listen, physical and mental stress has to be very particular when it comes to a woman. That's why when their hormones are low, if they're stressed out or if they're going through physical and mental things, it's gonna tank their hormones and it's gonna drain their body and they're gonna get sick. And I'm sorry in that, in the, in the world today, I started preaching this 20 some years ago saying, guys, you have to understand that your woman is not you. You need to protect her from stress. Anybody in nature, do you understand testosterone is a very aggressive, protective hormone? And that's why when all of a sudden we see all these soy boys out there trying to be women, I'm like going, no, be proud that you're aggressive. Be proud. It's really funny. Do you understand the testosterone? If you ever watch, you know, that's my sport. Okay, let's pause it here because he tends to ramble. So what he's saying here is if he goes out into the office and scares a man, he's going to have a jump in testosterone and that's good for him. He can handle that stress. So this is why men can handle the nine to five and us women, we're not as good at it, okay? Because we get severely impacted with stress. Our hormones shift and change and go all over the place the second we are stressed. This is why so many girls that come to me, they're like, I'm eating 2,500 calories. I'm like, I am, um, I, I'm not exercising anymore and I, I gained weight and I'm doing all this. I'm like, yeah, but you mentally attack yourself every single day for eating food. And you're super stressed over whether your body's done gaining weight or not. And you're super stressed about having to go to work every day and do all these things. And I'm like, that mental stress is what is preventing your hormones from balancing out. Because we can't handle it. And that's okay. It's okay. And it doesn't make us weak. But I think we just have to understand how our hormonal world works so that we can learn how to better work with that. Yeah. A healthy woman, by her biology, can only really have a sex drive maybe two weeks out of a month. Maybe. That is a, that is a massive bomb drive. Based on home. And that's if you're healthy. If you're stressed out, do you understand? Guess what? A guy's testosterone during stress, he could, he could break his arm, he could cut his finger off, and later at night, he's like, hey, honey, want to have some sex? But a woman, guess what happens? Any kind of stress hits her, hormones drop, guess what happens? There was a lot of really interesting points that he brought up in the rest of the podcast. I'll just link it down below. That way you guys can go ahead and watch all of it. I think there are a lot of very interesting topics um, that was kind of said in this um, that I don't really talk that much here on YouTube about, but uh, would love to honestly talk more about this. Uh, Just understanding not only our hormones, but understanding like who we are as women. I really like taking it into that kind of like bigger picture of like, how does this actually translate into my life? Like the whole sex thing of understanding that like your sex drive shouldn't be high all the time and you should have a dip in your sex drive. That's like really good to understand that. Uh, so that you don't think that you're wrong or bad for all of a sudden not wanting something, um, but you understand that, oh, this is just a part of my cycle and part of my flow. Um, okay, that is it for me today. This is kind of a long, or this is kind of a longer uh, video here, but I thought that it was like really, um, really interesting and wanted to bring out these points. Okay. That is it, guys. You can go ahead and watch another video of mine over here. Again, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and give me give me your thoughts in the comment section down below. All right.
Bye.